hello all welcome to my channel and in this video I'm going to show you how you can uh, write the Google Apps Script functions to actually get the financial portfolio tracker so this is part of a two-part video so if you haven't checked out the first part so link is in the description you can go and check out the first part of the video where I have showed you how you can maintain the data in the ledger so that using that information you can populate this portfolio information in the uh, using Google Apps Script so once you are in once you have opened your uh, google sheet you can go to the extension option and from there you can choose app script so once you have uh, once you click the app script option you will come to the app script window so here you will have to start from a new uh, project so i have named the project as financial planner and i already have so several functions defined in inside this uh, uh, in, uh, inside this uh, project so I will try to go through all of this. So I will not actually code it live in the in this video, but uh, you will uh, you can also always check out the uh, pause the video and uh, try to uh, replicate the code yourself. So I will start to explain the lines of the codes here. So here the first function that we need to understand is the get index function. So this function takes in the name of the stock that you are trying to. Uh, uh, populate the data for the type of the investment so if it's a mutual fund or an equity investment <coughs> the start date so the start date is the date uh, from which you want the investment to be tracked and the end date is the date up to which you want the investment information to be tracked so these two informations next you have the date remark and the quantity uh, field so this is essentially nothing but if I go to the uh, ledger page so this is essentially nothing but just the uh, column information for this uh, date remark quantity and the rate so the rate information is actually needed later on so just to highlight so now this function will return you the index so this information from the ledger will be passed as a column so depending upon which uh, trade we are conducting so if you are conducting the Infosys trade, so we need to know the index of those of the column vector at which these trades have taken place. So it will try to, if I can come back to the script. So this uh, index get index function will give you actually the index. So it has several variables. So let's say the index for all those trades which for which the date is less than the end date so it is mentioned as lesser equal to similarly for all the uh, similarly for all the uh, buy trades uh, which for which the date is lesser than the index Similarly, for all the sell, for all the start dates, which for which the uh, uh, for which the date is greater than the start date, all the buy trades, all the sell trades, for which the date is greater than the start date. So, with this with uh, with this initialization, uh, we can store the uh, IDs for the uh, indices in the columns. Now we have the current date information. Uh, next, we are defining some regex expression using these expressions. So, let's say I have some uh, ESOP trade. So, regex ES defines that expression. The order, the pattern would be start with some name for that uh, stock. Then, let's say dash NASDAQ dash ESOP which is exactly the pattern that we have used to define our trade here if we I again come back to the uh, ledger page so this is a pattern that I have used so there can be multiple uh, similar kind of uh, you know trades ESOP from different companies that you have worked across so using this next if let's say we have equity uh, investments in Indian uh, stock exchange like BSC or NSC then you have this coupled with the uh, depository information and it can have additional information also let's say uh, some intraday trades so here we are uh, 
uh, appending this uh, extra part also so dot means it can have any character and star means uh, any repetition of any character and it will end there thereupon similarly you can have investments of gold bonds you can have mutual fund investments so it will be have a starting with some name and then any combination of uh, letters and uh, symbols now i am taking the uh, start date so this uh, will be passed as a string and i am converting it into a, a javascript uh, data type of uh, of date data type so this is the way we are converting it into a, a date string uh, sorry a date object uh, similarly the end uh, date is also taken as a javascript date object then uh, we are calculating the length of the uh, of the remark uh, vector or the uh, remark array that we have now for each of these entries into the remark uh, column so for each of these entries into the remark column the script will try to calculate what is the current date so what is this date that we are talking of for each of these entries so it will calculate this using this uh, line then it will check if this date so the the way it is checking is it it will call the numerical value of this date and it will check if this date is lesser than the end date that we have specified so we have specified an end date of i think 31st august 2024 so if you are specifying this end date if this current date is less than or equal to this end date then only that trade should be considered if this trade has been carried out at a later date we need not be considering that trade within this time range now it will check if this the type of investment is a equity mutual fund invest uh, equity or mutual fund or a esop investment and correspondingly it will check if it is matching that regex expression that we have used so if it will if it's a equity trade and we have passed the name as infosys then it will check if let's say the uh, regex equity expression is matching with that uh, remark columns Uh, string uh, uh, string input. So if we don't have infosys dash nse dash cdsl somewhere inside that string, then it is not a valid choice. So it will move on to the uh, next loop variable or the next row for the remark axis. Uh, similarly, we can check for other things also. Like let's, let's say the gold bond. or if it's an esop so or if it's an mutual fund so all these checks can be done so you can always pause the video and uh, replicate these lines yourself next if this is a valid trade if we are finding a match for the ticker name then we will push the id to the index less than equal to end now if this for this uh, trade if the quantity is greater than equal to 0 then it's a buy trade uh then it's a buy trade uh it can also also alternate, alternatively can be a split so quantity can be mentioned as 0 if it's just a split or if it's a bonus share issue uh so we can push that id to the buy variable if it's not greater than equal to 0 then it's less than equal to 0 and it's a, a sell trade so if we can push that id to lesser equal to end sell array similarly if the current date is greater than the start date then we can push it to the greater equal to start array and similarly if it's a positive quantity then we can push it to the uh greater equal to start by array or if it's not then we can push it to greater equal to start sell array so after we have uh, calculated all this uh, arrays then we can just simply return all these arrays that we have calculated uh, to the calling function 
Now this get index function is getting called from all the other functions that we will be looking at. Now let's say come to the function of get quantity. If we again go back to the investment uh, spreadsheet and if we come to the quantity uh, column, so we have this function called get quantity. Similarly, we are also sorry. Similarly, we are also calling this function in the realized profit and gain section as well. So, how does this function work? So, similar to the uh, get index function. So, here inside the get quantity function, we will be calling the get index, and we will be uh, supplying the name, the type of investment, the real tag. So, it is essentially a uh, tag to see whether it is a realized uh, profit and loss or an unrealized profit and loss case uh, the start date the end date and the column uh, input the date remark quantity and similarly the rate is not uh, required here but anyway we are just uh, keeping it as an input here so we will call this function get index with all these inputs and it will give us some outputs so all of the output is not necessary so we will only be taking the output of the lesser equal to end and greater equal to start cell so here i am fixing the quantity update as zero and quantity sum as zero now if it's a realized profit and loss case so in the realized profit and loss case we will just have to sum Uh, we only have to sum the quantity over all the indexes that are greater than the start date and are falling in the cell category so if I again try to come back here so let's say it's a realized uh, trade so all the quantities that have been sold in between these two dates is the quantity for which I have to calculate the realized profit and loss so if it's realized then we sum it for all the trades that have been greater than equal to the start date and are coming in the sale array so the sale array will have all the quantities less than zero if I come here okay and anyway this uh, this array will always have uh, indexes which are less than the end date less than equal to end date that is the overarching condition we have okay so we are always considering the current date as the less than the end date here so that will actually be the uh, quantity sum now if it's a unrealized state then we have to uh, take the quantities all the quantities uh, uh, all the quantities which have been bought as well as sold up to the end date so the sum of all the quantities will give us the quantity sum now this is an additional check in this if statement that we are doing what we have seen is that If the absolute value of this quantity is greater than 0 0.001 we are considering that this quantity update is same as quantity sum this is because sometimes for mutual funds we will have the quantity as fractional values and if we sum these quantities here or maybe let's say here so it may turn out to be a very very small value which is very close to zero maybe in the order of 10 to the minus 12 so and and in those cases the sum is not zero so if you come to this uh, sheet again so if the sum is not zero then again all of this uh, rows will be printed but this is essentially a numerical uh, accuracy or truncation kind of problem here so we check if this absolute value is greater than 0 0.001 if it's greater than 0 0.001 then it is a valid quantity and we update it 
else it will be always uh, be considered as zero quantity update is always zero and that is the value we are returning now here are two functions uh, which we are using and which I will briefly touch upon so we have this sum method so if I go up you see that we have a sum method here function so I am getting the array and I am getting the indices over which I have to sum this uh, array so I keep a result as 0 and then I sum over all the indices uh, which are which I am supposed to sum so after that I am returning the result similarly dot product is an uh, function that I have mentioned here so it will take two arrays let's say it will take the rate and the quantity and it will do a dot product or inner product in between those two quantities so it will be let's say quantity i into rate i plus quantity j into rate j something like that so over all these indices and the indices will be same for both these arrays over which we have to sum it so this is another function that we will be using a little later now uh, after the quantity for the uh, of the each of the ticker or each of the shares mutual funds are found we need to calculate the buy value so let's first come to the buy value for the unrealized trades or the quantities that I hold in the portfolio so here I am mentioning the function get cp unreal and if I come to this you will see that there is this function get cp unreal so this function also take the same input the name type date start date end date remark quantity and rate columns and I am calling the same get index function to get these indexes that I need and after that I am defining some variables as this and I am calculating some uh, quantities for the shares from the start and let's say till the end so all the sh shares that have been sold from the start date and all the sh shares that have been sold till the end date so these two quantities are taken and it's minus because this quantity will be itself uh, negative quantities so uh, I will have to augment that with minus to make the quantities positive so here essentially what I'm doing is so all the trades that have been sold after the start date that I've mentioned so let's say I'm mentioning my start date as uh, 1st April so if I go to the ledger so all the trades that have been sold after the start date so it will be something like this for Infosys and uh, let's say something this and this so after the start date but lesser than the end date so all the shares that have been sold will be coming in this function uh, sorry in this variable similarly all the shares that have been sold uh, till the end date that we have mentioned 31st August 2024 and any share that have been sold previous to that is obtained by this so this is the complete set of complete quantity of all the shares sold and complete quantity of all the shares sold after the start date and before the end date and so the all the share that I mean so previously is this quantity now uh, here what we are doing is uh, we are initializing some variables uh, and we are writing a for loop for all the buy orders that we have placed till the end date now we are taking this qty temp variable quantity temp variable and we are adding it to and we are adding the buy orders that have been placed till the begin from the beginning of the uh, spreadsheet that we have created now if this buy order is less than the quantity previous then we are still calculating the shares that are previous to the uh, start date 
and we are calculating the cost price of these trades and uh, if it's greater than the quantity previous then we have to only account for the shares uh, that is sold off so let's say you can have let's say uh, till uh, 31st March so just before let's say this date 1st April 2023 so let's say 31st March 2023 till that day you have bought let's say 100 shares of uh, company A and you have sold 75 shares prior to that so in that scenario your uh, buy uh, quantity will be greater than the quantity previous so you will have a remainder of 25 shares so you will have to calculate the cost price for only the 75 shares okay only till the quantity previous so the 25 shares has to be calculated separately for the next shares that you have sold in between the start date and the end date so and if it's entering this quantity then it has to be flagged previous is equal to true so it is it has entered this uh, part of the if else statement uh, but probably uh, we can also do away with this variable because we are not using it uh, okay no oh, we need this variable because we have to check it here uh, now if we are okay so we, we got the cost price of all the shares that have been uh, sold before the start date that you have mentioned now for all the shares that are less than the end date you have to do the same exercise and if we are hitting this uh, if else statement if we have exceeded the end date quantity then we have to break out of the for loop and uh, we can calculate the CP out using the dot product between the rate the quantity and uh, sorry we, we take the CP out as 0 and we can calculate the CP all as a dot product between all the shares that were sold sorry that were bought before the end date and then we have the CP out variable which is nothing but just the subtraction of the CP end from the CP all variable so what this quantity has it has the cost price of all the shares uh, that have been bought till the end date and CP end has a cost price of all the shares that have been bought from the start date And if we just return this CP out variable, then we will have the cost price of all the unrealized shares. Next, coming to the uh, CP real, so it is the cost price of all the realized profit and losses. So similarly, we are calling this function with the arguments, and we are taking this uh, arrays. Next, we are defining two dates for the end and the start, and some variables here are uh, initialized. So we have a regex for the intraday trading in the form of this expression and then we are calculating the uh, we are taking some other variables here for the cost price of the intraday and the capital gains some count variables and here we are taking this index and slicing it up so we are essentially creating a duplicate of this in of these uh, arrays and then we are reversing it so the idea is that we will be popping out some quantities of out of these uh, indexes so it's easy to pop out if it's at the end uh, it's uh, less time consuming then we are initialing some more variables so after that we check if the length of the cell variable is greater than 0 so if we have only sold some quantity in this date range then only we will need to calculate the uh, realized profit and loss otherwise not so if if that is true then we will check the debt cell, the quantity cell. So debt cell is the debt for the selling and the quantity that was sold. And uh, we will try to check if it's 
an intraday trade so this is the regex id test for the intraday cell with the remark uh, vector next we have the pl type so if it's an id so if it's an intraday trade or if it's a cg trade capital gain then if it's a intraday trade then we will try to check for each of the buy ids that we have so each of the uh, let's say let's go back to the ledger so each of the rows that we have here so if it is a positive quantity it's a buy quantity so for each of these buy quantities if uh, the date of the buy is matching with the date of the sell then we will take that id so let's say i have sold some 25 shares here so this 25 shares of infosys will only be sold intraday if i have bought some 25 shares on that same day so i have to check the date and if these date two dates are matching then only i will be offsetting this 25 quantity from the bought 25 quantity that's the idea here and we will take the id of this uh, index where we found the match with this buy array uh, next we will calculate uh, or else we will calculate the capital gains uh, uh, or it's a well, rather it's a case of capital gains so uh, we will take the date for that now we will calculate the buy uh, quantity so i have the id where it is matching so if it's so just to reiterate only if it's a intraday trade then only it can be so the array can be plucked out of any place if it's not an intraday trade it will be always plucked from the end of the array so it will be always ii will be always zero or uh, rather uh, it will be always the end element so it is always the end length of the array minus one uh, since it is reversed so if you see here we are reversing the array if we take the uh, non-reversed array then it is the first element of the array so that buy order that was coming so the shares that were purchased first will be sold first that is the fundamental principle so if i have some sell quantities so whatever quantity it is let's say i have 30 quantities so it will be always matched with the shares that were bought first so if i let's say I have 50 quantities bought first and 30 quantities sold first so this 30 quantities will off, always be offset from the first 50 quantities similarly let's say i have uh, 30 quantities bought first but uh, 70 quantities sold first so this 30 quantities entire 30 quantity for the bought array will be used up then the next uh, element will be checked if it has let's say 25 quantities then those 25 quantities will also be used up so we total have used up 55 quantities but I have 70 sale quantities so I additionally need some 15 quantities so those 15 quantities will also be used up from the third element if it's there so it's something like that you have to imagine the uh, array in your mind and then uh, you can probably understand the uh, logic so if you just uh, reproduce these uh, statements here so here i'm just going to check whether the cell quantity is less than the tolerance this is again due to some numerical issue with mutual fund quantities which will have some fraction so if it's ideally should be it should be less than zero but we're keeping a small tolerance of 0 0.00 uh, so 10 to the power minus 6 essentially so if it's less than that then we are consuming the entirety of the cell quantity so the cell quantity is lesser here and we are consuming the entirety of the cell quantity minus sign to make it positive and we are updating the buy quantity so this quantity has been consumed from the buy array so I am I am subtracting that and the sale quantity will be anyways coming to zero because this and these are equal so the cost price will be based on the quantity consumed and the price for the corresponding uh, consumed uh, quantity so this is a buy array and we are calling the rate for that now since the sale quantity has been consumed we can pop it out from the end of the array and the count will be now is equal to like uh, this, the new count will be count plus one so initially the count is starting from let's say zero now since one element has been popped out from the cell array we are updating the count to count plus one 
next the case can be if let's say this uh, quantity sell minus quantity buy let's say if it's uh, equal so it can still have some small value of uh, 10 to the minus 12 or something for fractions or decimals so we are taking this tolerance so if it's greater than this tolerance and less than this tolerance then we can essentially call that this is a uh, this is zero zero so this trade the quantity for the sale and the quantity for the buy is coming as equal so the quantity consumed is again it, it can be either the quantity sale or the quantity buy and we are updating similarly the quantity buy and the quantity sell and in this case we'll pluck both the quantity buy as well as the quantity sell uh, sorry the quantity sell because uh, here we are consuming both the quantity for the buy array as well as the sell array so we will be popping out now if the PL type is ID or intraday then we have to pluck it from the middle also it may also happen so we are using this splice method we are giving the ID and one element will be plucked out if it's not a intraday trade we can pluck it from the end of the array only because intraday remember it can happen at any place inside the array and since we are uh, popping out a cell element so we are updating the quant uh, count new similarly if the quantity cell is greater than the buy array so the quantity cell will not be completely consumed so the quantity consumed is only the quantity buy and then we are again similarly updating and the calculating the cost price and then if it's uh, again a PL type of intraday then we are splicing it otherwise we are popping it and since we don't have any sale quantity consumed completely so we will not pop out the sale array element the last element now we are calculating the uh, cost price for the uh, the uh, each of the individual type let's say the uh, if it's an intraday or if it's a capital gain array we will just update this uh, cell next uh, we are taking again the CP variable as 0 and then again we will be summing for all the IDs for all the dates which are greater than the start date and we will be summing them up and this will give me the total cost price the average cost price of all the quantities that we had calculated now I understand that this is a very complicated example so let's try to see it with an with a uh, with a real life example so let's say I have 58 quantity so here we are looking at CPDL so here we have the CPDL function so let's say I have 58 quantities that have been sold now what is the buy price of this CP of these 58 quantities that we have to understand first so let's again go back to the uh, spreadsheet and we try to we delete all this old data here now these 58 quantities for Infosys would be so the 50 so now out of the 58 uh, if you remember so the 23 will be consumed through the intraday trading so the cost price of this 23 uh, 25 five, sorry rather so this 25 is already fixed it is 4025 is 4025 now the remaining uh, shares is like 23 and 10 so these shares have to be consumed from the first trade 50 so here we are taking let's say 33 into the cost price of these shares this so this so if we sum it up sorry so you have 90,080 so you have the same buy value here and the average buy value is simply nothing but division of the total buy value by the quantity so this is an example to illustrate that now let's say 
then we have to calculate the selling price. So the calculation of the selling price is very straightforward. So we will calculate the only the array for which we have all the sale quantities greater than the start date. And then we will just take the dot product of those two uh, of the quantity and the rate and that will give me the selling price for all the uh, shares that have been sold. Now coming to the example, let's say I have 58 shares. Now what is the sale price of this 58 shares? So again, let's delete all this. So out of this 58, 25 is sold through intraday. So this is fixed. So let's say we take this. Now another 33 will be sold through here and here. Sorry. So here and here. So we can take this and this. And we can try to sum it up. So 84, 750, let's say. I think I have taken one additional cell. I will just uh, remove it. Eighty-four seven fifty. So let's check if this is matching with the portfolio value. Yes, eighty-four seven fifty. So here you have the sale value of eighty-four seven fifty. And similarly, you can get the average sell by dividing it by the quantity. Correct. So this is done. Uh, now we have to calculate the uh, realized profit and loss. So we, ha we have already seen up to get SP function. Now we have get RL uh, real PL function. So it is taking the similar type of input. Only additional input is the PL tag here and uh, the time limit here. So the PL tag is essentially nothing but the intraday STCG or LTCG this uh, row or, the, or rather this cell what we have here and the time limit is essentially nothing but just the time that we have mentioned for realizing the long term and short term profit uh, profits so without uh, so with this we can start so we are again calling the get index function to get this required ids uh, the remainder of the ids we don't need so we are just mentioning a comma uh, again we are taking the end date start date converting into a uh, javascript object we're taking the difference in the date so we have to compare if the date for buy and sell is greater than or less than the time limit so we are converting this into milliseconds because the if we use the value of object uh, uh, sorry value of method so like we have used here so this method will give the value in milliseconds so we have to compare it in milliseconds to understand if this date the difference between the buy and the sell date if it's uh, less than let's say one year or more than one year or less than two year or more than two years something like that so we are taking this uh, date buy date sell then we are taking the regex for intraday it uh, defining some pl type then cp cp id which is intraday and uh, yep I think yeah, we can rename these functions probably. Uh, so I have renamed the variables appropriately. This will be storing the profit and loss and not the cost price. So it's better to name them as PL. So PL intraday ST and LT. Uh, similarly, the variables are defined as the previous part that we had saw for the CP uh, realized. Next, similarly, we are taking the in cell length. If it's greater than zero, then we are entering the loop, and we are checking if these dates uh, for the for the buy if it's a match for the intraday uh, remark uh, column, and then uh, we are checking which date is matching for the buy order as well. Similarly, for the capital gains, uh, we are taking the buy date. And uh, now if the quantity is less than buy, then we are popping up the sell quantity. If the quantity is equal, then we are popping up both buy and sell quantity. If the quantity is greater than, if the sell quantity is greater than buy quantity, then we are popping up only the buy quantity. If the PL type is uh, intraday, then we are adding it to the, the, we are calculating the profit 
so the profit is calculated as the quantity consumed and the difference between the rate for sell and the rate for buy and we're adding it appropriately to the profit for intraday or short term and long term then we are again checking if the date is uh, greater than the start date then we are calculating the uh, total profit for all the intraday or all the short term or all the long term profit and whatever is a PL tag that value will be outputted so if the PL tag is intraday then it will be outputted into the intraday cell so that's it that's about it so I will try to uh, again uh, briefly uh, like uh, scroll down through the script so that if you want to implement it you have some uh, information you can pause the video and implement it on your own Okay, that's all about this video. Thank you all. See you in the next video.